Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Condo Insider. And uh, I'm your host, Jane Sugimura, and we are here to talk about condominium issues, uh, mainly because uh, one third of the uh, people in the state of Hawaii live in condominiums. And uh, we, you know, have these weekly programs to talk about issues that affect people who live in condominiums and their management. And uh, today I have as my guest Cameron DeCosta, and Cameron uh, works uh, for C4 Management. Cameron, can you tell me what you do for C4 Management? Well, I'm an, one of their elite site managers. I've um, been working with C4 for about 12 years now and I worked uh, with RNJ Services prior to that. Um, C4 Management does pretty much what a site manager does is uh, daily operations of all the, the pool, the janitorial, overseas contractors for the landscaping, um, if you're gonna do asphalt repair, any kind of minor projects, no, no large projects, of course. Um, pretty much make sure that your building is running smoothly. Um, <clears throat> so I've been doing that um, for quite a while now. And, and you do this for condominiums and for community associations, right? Correct, correct. High rises and um, associations such as Eva Beach that has uh, multifamily homes structure. And, and C4, uh, I understand, uh, you do temporary property management so that you can go in and take over for what, when the, the resident manager ha is, has to take a leave or is on vacation. You can just go in and take over for that temporary? Correct, correct. Um, the owner of the company, Angel DeCosta, um, has been doing this for a few years now where we do come in when resident managers go on um, sick leave or vacation. A lot of uh, resident managers, you know, uh, family emergencies have to leave for two weeks to a month, et cetera. So um, we'll come in, in the blind, take a set of keys and run a building. All right. Um, with the experience of all our, our crew, um, we're able to make that happen. Um, we're unique because um, when you purchase a C4 contract, um, a monthly contract with us, you don't just get the, the resident manager. So you'll get myself, which is like a resident manager. I'm there all the time. I r make sure all your contracts are flowing. But in the background, you still have um, a lot of other people that help out. Like you said, we have electricians, we got um, handymen, we got uh, a lot of other site managers who's experienced different things. Um, I'm more mechanical, so I, I will know a lot about your domestic water pumps and your booster pumps, your heat pumps and things like that, where a lot of our other managers will know more about landscape and um, everything else and about the building. And so. so this is like a collective effort, so you get every yeah, 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 yeah. So you get everybody. So that's how we make a building run is we'll bring in diff what's needed. Mm -hmm. If certain buildings need certain things, a lot of times most people just need janitorial, someone to straighten the chairs, someone to clean the bathrooms and check the pool, then we'll bring that in. If you need oversight of contractors, so you need someone to come in and oversee your employees that are doing all the work, make sure you meet with them every Monday, let them know what their job scope is for the week, et cetera. Then you'll bring in someone like myself, more of a site manager. Um, so whatever the association needs, we're usually able to provide. Okay, and today we're gonna to be talking about an issue, it's called aging in place in condominiums. And you and I were talking about this uh, several times. <coughs> and, 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 and you know there's a law that uh, the condominium statute has a provision about aging in place. You, did, did you know about that before I told no, you? No, I did not know that. Okay, that's probably because you're too young. <laughs> uh, but, but let me just tell you that maybe 10, 15 years ago, uh, we started to hear issues. I mean, condominium attorneys uh, were com and, and people in the business, managers, were talking about problems that they were experiencing in condominiums where you had elderly people and maybe some of them had dementia and they'd go walking in the hallways you know half naked or you know they just didn't really understand what was happening and they weren't taking care of their units and maybe there was hoarding and 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 the situation with these unit owners uh, was affecting other people uh, in the building uh, mainly because if they didn't take care of their units, you ended up with bugs and hoarding causes, you know, fire hazards. And so people started complaining. And, um, 
and right. a bunch of us went to the legislature and asked um, the uh, legislature to enact some laws to allow condominiums to deal with these situations because we had no authority. It, I mean, it's not like we could go in and, and do anything for these people Correct. who were um, uh, having these um, aging issues, especially if they had no family members. And many of them had no family members. And see, that was part of, part of the problem. They had no family members here. Uh, maybe their friends had all died, and so they really had no support. And so the legislature did enact a statute that said that if condominiums, if the association and their staff do help these people, they're not going to be held liable for any actions that they take. And one of the things that they, they did is they allowed the associations to call social service agencies to come in and, you know, with social workers and who would then deal with these residents and help them get services that uh, would help them. I mean, maybe they need somebody to go and get them groceries or take them to doctor's appointments or even just to come once a week to clean the units. And, you know, for all of that, you kind of need the management assistance. <coughs> Correct. Right? Correct. Be because, you know, when you have vendors, because th that means you have vendors coming into the building, and they would need parking. And so you, we would have to cooperate yes. with, with the managers to get uh, those types of, uh, you know, services to accommodate the vendors who come and help these uh, people. And some of them weren't elderly. Some of them were disabled. But, you know, they needed the services. So... Uh, anyway, the law was changed so that you know those the the condominium could or association could to, could take those steps. Now, based on your experience, have you have have you seen personally seen any type of situation that would fit within this aging in place? Well, I only have a few small incidents. Okay. Uh, relating to this. Um, Many, many really, really small ones, such as bugs, like you, like you mentioned, um, hoarding, um, elderly not being able to take care of themselves, um, meaning, you know, after they're done eating dinner, cleaning their own dishes, putting it back, cooking their own food and such. So a lot of times we'll see them um, ordering a lot of fast food or people delivering food for them, and um, they might not even be able to go to the trash cans themselves, so they won't take out their own rubbish. Um, therefore, it's sitting there, you know, days, weeks, months, sometimes even years. Um, and it does cause an infestation of bugs. And, you know, normally when we find out about this kind of stuff, it's normally uh, other units surrounding it will start having um, problems with roaches, um, ants, and uh, So how, how, what do they do? do? Do the residents complain to the manager? Yeah, they'll definitely complain about it. Um, and we'll, our first action is normally um, the building will get onto some type of monthly... Um, service and we'll treat the uh, units around it and and try to minimize it um, from affecting the entire building try to keep it into that one unit um, it's very difficult like you said because you don't know you know you those those homes belong to the person and you can't just enter and go and treat that unit without permission and so that's that's good to hear about this um, this law on the um, 514B that does help the elder league and people without family because we, we're pretty much stuck at that where we can treat all around it with permission of the units around that want help but when it comes to that individual unit they may or may not let us in and um, to get forced entry you know it really has to be an emergency and we really have to know that something is wrong in that unit whether the person's you know passed away in the unit or it's, it's a real health hazard and to get to that point, it's really, really, really difficult. And there's not too many services out there that will help us when you're, when well, you let, suspect let's, something. Let, yeah, let's when talk you about the bugs. Yeah. Uh, the bugs. Do the bugs, do, do they complain about the bugs coming out into the open? I mean, tra you know, <coughs> yeah, going um, from unit to and unit? And I don't know. Yes, they do. They definitely run, run through the, the walls and, and go into the other units, especially when there's not a food source in that unit anymore. Um, and they'll start to spread. And so, what, what, when you farther. get a, a complaint about bugs, and what, what I mean, what have you? You know, what are your on behalf options? of the association? We normally only can treat the the common areas, mm -hmm. and that that's because everybody who pays their association fee doesn't want to pay for you to treat individual units. Um, so we only can treat the the association, and 
that only gets you so far. And then af after that, we usually will get the units around it a really good rate, whether it's $15, $20 a unit to, to, to offer the service inside their unit while um, we're having treatment of the common area. And then that way we're able to get into those units, really evaluate it, treat it, and hopefully stop it at that. But to get into the unit, um, if, if the person that's causing the disturbance wants help, then we're always willing to help. Management will get on the phone, we'll have all the services come out and help them. Um, but that's 99% of the time not, the, not what happens. What about the <laughs> Department of Health? You know, um, this, we just haven't, I personally haven't had too many incidents where I had to call um, Department of Health. Um, the few times that we did, we were, we, we didn't get any help because um, maybe the complaint wasn't large enough or it's too, um, you know, we just didn't have enough evidence. So, so, I mean, is, but if the department, ha has there been a situation where the Department of Health has come out? <coughs> I mean, you can call them. Not for me, no. I haven't, I haven't had them come out for any, any large situation before. Okay. Is there any government agency that you know of that you can call? With, if you, you know, the Adult Protective Services is another one. Um, but I think, I think they're all kind of on the same line where the person has to want help. And um, they have to be willing to contact this service and get a social worker or get help. Um, for us to just give it to them is pretty much impossible. Um, every time I've called and tried to get somebody help, um, yeah, I was unable to. So, so it, 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 this is a very frustrating situation. Yes, yeah, very, very frustrating. And it, and you know when when you know, let's say somebody's like you say has a huge infestation in their unit and causing a lot of problems for the whole building. Um, it's very frustrating because we can't just pick the locks, go in there, and um, do what we need what, to do. What, what, I mean, you can. There's a fine line. There's a really fine line. Um, and so that's, and that's where we don't want to cross the line because we don't want to be liable, and we want to make sure that, you know, we, the, usually the homeowners um, Don't want us to come in, and they're very clear about that. And so we don't want to. We don't. If we cross the line, you know, there's there's liability. And, and 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 you know, when you have a situation like this, like with bugs, or with smell, like you said, people you know have yes, the food, yeah. and they maybe they don't clean up. Do, and do people complain about the smell? Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the the biggest signs is the smell. And um, I say two out of three of the situations I've been in, um, we've, we've smelt it before we actually knew there was a problem. <laughs> and we're like, wow, what's that smell? And you know, it gets stronger and stronger. And then you're like, okay, some, something needs to be done. There's either a roach problem, hopefully someone didn't pass away in that unit. So you do, you do your duty and you try to contact that unit. You know, um, of course, you, hopefully you get a hold of that person. If you don't, then at that point we call HPD, we go, we, we enter and we make sure that that person's okay. It, um, we call all the emergency um, numbers that we have, which, is, which leads me to the registration of units. It's very, 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 very important that you put all of your family information on that type of form because as management, we, we use that. Um, that's, You're talking you know, about the registration form yes, that yes, every owner who, or, 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 or tenant yeah. who lives in a building fills out for the management. Correct, correct. And that's one of our, our largest things we do is make sure that that's up to date every single year and that we have as much information as possible. And a lot of people don't want to give it out. You know, why does management need to know this? Why does management need to know who my parents are and what their phone numbers are? My, my brother and sister that live in Vegas, it does, you know, they don't live here. They don't need that information. But it's really, really important, especially if your parents are elderly and you don't live on the island. And, and th this is the way that they, you can get them help. Yes. Right, but right now we're, we're going to have to take a break, so we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll take, we'll take a, a, a one-minute break, I think. And we'll... Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. 
Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Okay, welcome back. And we are talking to Cameron DeCosta about uh, his experiences uh, with aging in place. And you were talking about, you know, the frustration that you as a manager have to face when you're dealing with somebody who may have some uh, uh, mental or emotional problems or, you know, maybe, you know, they don't understand what's happening and maybe, maybe because they're, you know, getting older and, and, um, and, 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 and some of the problems that you, you mentioned were, you know, the infestation of bugs mm -hmm. and the smell. Um, so how do you deal with these? You know, what, I mean, how, I mean what, what does the association, how does the association deal with these problems? You know, it's really case by case um, because there's the large spectrum of things that could be happening in that unit. And um, like you said, the fine line of, of doing your due diligence and doing your job and trying to make sure that person's safe, first of all, and, you know, are they in an environment that could be a health hazard to them and the, the units around them? And um, and how do you follow protocol based off of your bylaws and such? So you know, um, it's pretty simple to do the first few steps of like sending a letter or contacting the unit if you get contact and they're not able to remedy the smell, whether it's like said pest control or. And in or fact, when when when, when, you, when you send the letter, you're basically sending them a letter saying we've been receiving these complaints correct, and we want to do an correct. inspection. Well first we do the calling and then if they don't remedy it you know quickly then we send the letter and that way we, we can make sure we we cover ourselves and um, and the letter will normally state that yeah you're getting numerous complaints from adjacent units and you need to take care of the situation or we may be requesting that we enter and inspect and we have had to do that numerous times where um, we, we smell something from a unit, um, we send them a letter, uh, we schedule an appointment with them um, requesting that we, we just make sure that it's safe and um, it's a clean environment. Um, and we go in and we just inspect. And a lot of times, you know, they know we're coming and they'll clean it up. They'll have their, their everything boxed and cleaned and they'll um, shampoo the carpets and, um, you know, do what they can to make it pass. And we'll come in and we'll, we'll no, That's pro for the, no for, problem. For the, for the people that don't, you don't have a problem. But with the people you who do have the problem. But a lot of the hoarders, they know. They know that they're saving a lot of things. And they, more than that they need. And it's stacking up. And they're throwing things in the corner. And sometimes it's just, it, it, it causes smells. Because they didn't know that they had something in a bag that was perishable. And they just didn't take care of it. And it's, and it's they're not doing it on purpose. And when, they're, when they live in that um, unit and they got pets, you know, sometimes there's feces and things like that, and they clean it up, but maybe they don't clean it up really good, and it occurs every 24 hours, you know, the pet might pee on the carpet or poop on the carpet continuously. And, you know, we, we might be months down the line and we start smelling something. So we're like, hey, you know, we want to inspect your unit or you need to take care of this smell. Um, and then they usually do. Most, most of the time... Those kind of items, they'll, they'll come and they'll take care of it. Most, most homeowners are good about that. It's the elderly ones that they might not be able to, and they, not, they might not know what they need to do. And they just live with the situation um, where, like you said, their, their kitchen is full of, um, you know, uh, dinnerware that hasn't been cleaned and their refrigerator and fridge have they haven't used it in years so whatever was in there when they when they um stopped walking or, or you know it's still in there and, and and you 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 did have an incident where you, where there was an elderly person mm -hmm. who was in and in, 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 in into denial yes, and yes, she was yes. not cooperating correct in fact you weren't even allowed to get in correct and you contacted her family members correct and the family members will also try to get, get 
help from social welfare agencies and what what happened correct well we were thankful in, in this situation where the um, the family was willing to help and they did come down from the mainland and um, try to talk their way into the unit and it was um, a little bit of hoarding and a little bit of um, a little bit of everything on this on this situation um, she was elderly wasn't mobile and definitely a hoarder as well so we had a little bit of everything um, the family themselves haven't spoke with with this their mother in over a year as well so it wasn't a good situation but we, at least we had help from family so the family did come down and try to get in um, unfortunately the mother uh, did not give access to even her own family um, kept denying us access made a lot of promises to us that she was going to be taking care of the situation and that she did schedule with um, different uh, uh, Pest control companies, and she even gave us dates, but they never did show up. Uh, and, whether and in fact, what you found out when, when, when and, and, and this incident came to your attention because the residents, the neighbors were complaining about the noise, I mean, about the smell, right? Yes, yes, yes. And you found out that there were neighbors who were actually enabling this person, correct, buying her correct, groceries correct, correct. and running her errands. Yeah, and, you and know, like you said, the, the elder league that live in the building, they might have bought in the building when they were in their 30s or 40s and now the building's 40 years old so you know they've been living there all this time and they have a bunch of friends all their neighbors so nobody really wants to complain about them even though they know there is a problem they, they usually shop for these people take out their trash for them do a lot of a lot of helpful things um so that's why we get into those situations is because they're they're helping but at the same time they're enabling because um you know, and while they're enabling them, that person doesn't seek help. Correct. That person thinks she has it all under control, and they, they're, like you said, they're getting someone to l deliver them food and take out their trash. And so what's going on in their unit, they, f they feel like they're, they just stay like that for years and years, and that just, keep, that just keeps happening and happening. Meanwhile, they're not, they're not cleaning or in or out of their unit. They just stay there. They don't see doctors, a lot of them. So it, it gets, as they get um, older, and without family on island, it, it really gets tough, tough for management. And, and with this particular uh, person, uh, you were f the family was finally able to get remove her and take her back to the mainland? Correct. Correct. What happened to the unit after they were able to remove her? Well, uh, it was, it's, it's kind of a good situation because... Um, the family hired a, a vendor to come in and clean. Yes, a, a bio company to come in and clean. And, so and when, when you said bio company, what are they? I mean, what, what, I mean, what exactly is a bio company? <laughs> well, um, I don't know how much detail do you want me to go into, but yeah, like I said, people don't enter and exit the unit, and so the elderly in this situation, she, I guess, her toilet must have um, broke on her, and so she started to urinate in bottles. Don't know what she was doing with her feces at this point, but we do know that it, it was very, it was a very um, dangerous unit at this point. You know, it's a lot of spores in the air, and it's a not, it's a health hazard for sure. And so, in we, fact, in fact, when they went in, they they went in with gas masks, didn't they? Correct. We we made sure that the it and full biohazard full, suits. It needed full suits and with booties and and gloves and helmets. So they went into this unit. Yep. With full hazmat gear. Correct. It's a perfect example on how not, you know, how it's dangerous. And, you know, I think this situation, it did lead to her getting sick in the end. And so... And what yeah. happened to this resident? Well, I just found out she just recently passed away from um, some type of lung, um, lung problem. And so and everybody pointed in the direction of that. She was living in her unit with infested... And like you said, with all the, the bile around, so. With all the toxic yes, fumes. Yes, toxic and, fumes and, and stuff. So she shouldn't have been breathing that for all these months or even a year. And so you, 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 you were present when, when the biohazard people went in. What exactly did they have to do to clean this unit? Well, of course, dispose of all the carpet, you know, throw away all of the food that's left out like you said clean up everything clean the refrigerators they they removed everything they had to throw out 90 percent of the unit pretty much we're it's gonna get that whole unit's gonna get overhauled 
it's um, going to demo the They're the going to demo everything. Yeah, the bathroom needs to be demoed. Pretty much all the walls got to be demoed because of the smell gets, like you said, absorbed into the paint. So they had blowers and it's it's a pretty bad situation. So they took out all the furniture? Correct. They they furniture, they, soft items, clothing. All the clothing rugs, the closets everything. got every, all the clothing in the closets got thrown out. All the bedding was thrown away. Correct. The furniture, if it was usable, it was what donated. They, yeah, they donated. They saved um, what they could. They they worked it with the with with the family um, for them to come in and also take what they what they wanted and sell what they thought needs to be sold, like nice china or anything that of value they would keep. But all of the clothing rugs and every, um, soft items, couches, things like that, all had to be disposed of because of the situation. Okay, and... Unfortunately, yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and now, what the family now has to do, now that the unit is pro in the process of being demoed, is they're gonna have to renovate it. Correct. And after they renovate it, they'll probably sell it. Correct. But that's been quite an odyssey, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Very, very difficult, and it, it takes a lot of time to do it to do it right, and um, and make sure that uh, you know you're looking after the well-being of the person in the unit. And and the and, and with in your situation, I mean, it was you and your staff, the association staff, and it was the association board yeah, there's, members. There's really a lot. And a there lot, were the vendors, and it was the family member, the family who had to uh, come over, and some of the residents. Who were good friends of the of, of the woman, right? Mm -hmm. it, it took basically lots of steps. A, a village and all of those people. Tons and tons of people that and had it, to help and throw in and. And it cost a lot of money. Yes, lots and lots of money. Lots and lots of money, which is a shame. Hello. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you, Cameron, for being with us and sharing with us. And I'm sh I'm sure you know uh, you're young to this industry, so I'm sure you're going to have a lot more stories. And hopefully, you'll come back and share them with us. And uh, join us next week, and we will have another topic of interest.